I've got an exercise for you that will help change your awareness of success, not only quickly, but massively in scope. So let me just tell you a little bit of a story. When I first started to have an inkling that I really wanted to be successful, I did something out of necessity, not knowing the ramifications that it would have, okay? And what it was was that at that time, I was working for a company and I basically lived 100 miles away from that company. I had kids, I, I was married, I had a house, I had all the responsibilities, you know, like my life was full. There was no, and I was working, like, like working my tail off was the, was the idea of the day because I was trying to climb the ladder in this company. And I had a hundred miles to work and a hundred miles back home from work every day, every day. It was like six days a week. So not every day, but six days a week. I recognized out of, um, something that I, that I did, I had a, a, a tripling of my income, if you've heard my story in other podcasts, uh, in a matter of 30 days, it was completely unexpected, came totally out of the blue, had no idea what caused it. And I knew that I had made a change in myself, but I had no idea what it was. I was really an unconscious competent. And that lit a fire in me. I wanted to start learning more, but I didn't know where to start, right? And this is all before the internet. So I started going to libraries, right? Getting biographies, kind of just like wandering around, picking up books, reading it. I was looking for something that said to me, here's the way to go. Here's here's a direction. Because I didn't know what it was, right? I never heard of professional development or self-improvement or anything like that. And slowly but surely, over a period of time, I came home one night and I was introduced to Tony Robbins' personal power tapes, right? This is back in the early 90s. And that's a whole nother story in itself. But I bought them and it was on cassette tape. So I started listening to them in the car. Now, this was like the first major door that opened for me because here was somebody that was talking about how to change your life, how to be successful in ways that I had never been exposed to in my life. But there were some challenges with this. One of them was that it was very obvious that Tony's worldview was almost the polar opposite of what my worldview was at the time, completely different. But I was so hungry for what I was doing. I was listening. I was like hanging on every word that guy said. So it took me about an hour and a half to drive to work, an hour and a half to drive home. And I started listening to those tapes over and over again. And then in those tapes, every once in a while, he would mention a book that he read or another person that he learned from. And I started looking to see, was there any you know information, like get, get this next book or whatever. And I discovered books on tape, seminars on tape, right? Biographies on tape. All, and it was like I hit the jackpot because it would take me, I didn't have enough time to really sit down and read every day, let alone repeat those readings as much as necessary in order to begin to change my mind. So I turned my car into a library. I got all the music out of my car, which was like, I'm a total music buff. I absolutely love music. I used to just live to listen to music all the time. It was like my escape from, you know, the stresses of the day. And I turned my car into a place of learning. And I literally was spending three hours a day that would have been otherwise completely wasted time filling my mind in with different information. But I was I was doing something that, that my team now refers to as Nagel going deep, right? Which is when I get locked on in on an idea, I want to know everything everything about it. I am totally fascinated with human potential and psychology and what makes people better and success and business, all of these different things. So I started to develop this habit and I would get one book and then another one, all on tape, by the way, right? Some, some I was reading, you know, like hardbacks and paperbacks and stuff, but the things that I was doing every day was keeping me exposed to a different world. Now, here's something that I didn't know. I was in my 20s when this happened, I didn't realize that I was literally going through a process of deconstructing my worldview, which said that success wasn't for me, 
Making a lot of money wasn't for me. Success is difficult. You're a loser because you quit high school. You've got all these bad habits, right? Like just on and on and on. There was nothing there in the foundation of how I was raised that would ever say, this person will be more successful. He'll probably work a labor job for the rest of his life. That type of thing, you know, hang out at the corner bar, you know, every night after work or on the weekends or, you know, stuff like that. Turning that around was something that I needed to do that I didn't know that I needed to do. So as I'm listening to all of these biographies and I'm studying history and I'm studying philosophy, like I'm listening to all this stuff and I'm cramming it in every day, the same kind of topic with different authors and different viewpoints, and I'm just taking it all in, which ca- which is causing inside of me massive questions because I'm getting like a polar opposite viewpoint of everything that I believe. And it's causing me to ask questions about it in a way to determine what the truth was, which is a main point of what I want to communicate today. We live in a world where there's a massive amount of known information available to basically every human being. But it doesn't mean that it's true. And our minds are often very manipulated by things that are not true. Because it's, it's not getting better on the internet and social media. It's actually getting worse. Anybody can post anything and with AI and the generations that it can make, you can't tell the difference between what's true or what's not. So you have to develop something inside of yourself in order to be able to go deep and find out the truth. When you're studying something, the first thing that you want to do is not take anything for face value. That means, including me, what I say, not at face value. Do the homework. Study to find out what is true. When you see something that's interesting, ask yourself, where can I find out more information on this topic? Read all the books that have been written about the topic that you're interested in. See what other people have to say. Study the history of things, of people, of companies, whatever it is that it might be, to understand how they made the changes to do the things that they want to do. Now, I picked up something way back around 1996. I was reading a book called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles, and he talked about something in that book. He said, if a person is really serious and they want to change as fast as possible, They need to spend all of their time, almost all of their time, in contemplating these ideas so that they can change from the habitual thinking that makes life difficult to an automatic thinking that makes it easy. We literally change the foundation of the way that we think in life so that it gives us a totally different perspective of the universe that we're in. And I, I want to share something with you. I have a book called Working with the Law by Raymond Hollywell that I have studied and it's been around me and and, uh, something that I've taught from for over 20 years now. And it's just one brilliant page after another. Again, it's Working with the Law by Raymond Hollywell. You can pick it up on the internet. He says this, The spiritual supply from which the visible comes is never depleted. It never runs out. It's with you all the time. It will yield according to your demand upon it. It is not affected by your ignorant or blind talk of lack or loss. Only you are the one affected, and you control your manifestations with your thought. The unfailing resource is willing to give. It has no choice in the matter. If you continue to pour out your thoughts into this substance, this will prosper you. And then he says, Turn the energy of your mind upon ideas of plenty, love, happiness, joy, health, and they will in turn will appear to you. Whenever I read something like this, somebody goes, yeah, but you got to do the hard work that goes with it. I'm not saying that you don't have to do the work that goes with it, but a person won't be willing to do the work until they actually start to believe that something is possible for them. And this goes back to the idea of me changing my worldview. I was very much steeped in the idea that everything that I dreamed that I could accomplish in life was extraordinarily hard and probably not even practical for me. I thought that I was a bad student. I mean, I quit high school when I was 17 years old. I never did well in school. I only had a few classes that I ever did well in. 
And yet I became a voracious student after that. It was like paradoxical, like how could this possibly be? And one of the reasons for that was because I found what I was actually interested in. I really, At the time, I really wasn't interested in the things that they were teaching in grade school and in high school. When I started to, to be um, introduced to various other different kinds of topics and things, I became a voracious reader. I've read thousands of books. I've, and, and it's not just reading them once. When I say go deep, you have to read something more than once. You have to read it to understand it, not read it to get through it, right? Most people will take a book like this or any other book, right? And they read it with the idea of getting to the end of the book. Why? Well, that's because that's the way that we were taught. When I worked with my mentor, he said, no, 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 that's not what you want. He said, it might take you a lifetime to go through that book. He said, the key is, if you don't understand something, there's no point in taking more information in that you don't understand. He said, go through it sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph. Ask all the pertaining questions that are necessary to what it is that you're reading in that book until your questions around it are gone, until you thoroughly understand what the author's saying. What is the author trying to communicate? How does it affect your life and what you're doing? Is it making your life easier or difficult? You've often heard me say that making money is easy. Making money is one of the easiest skills that anybody could possibly learn. Yet we have uh, an idea around it that it's difficult and it's hard and you've got to be super intelligent or have great new ideas or whatever. And none of that is actually true. It's not that those things can't bring wealth. They can because money has a tendency to go to wherever it's easily manifested. But also think about something that contradicts this. There's criminals that are wealthy. There's drug dealers that are wealthy. There's people that break all kinds of laws that become wealthy. Wealthy is not uh, just something that you have to be super intelligent or be right or just in order to bring in because money has no conscience, right? It doesn't determine where it goes and there's nothing good or bad inherently within the idea of money itself. The idea is that it's supposed to make our life easier, but not by it becoming harder to make our life easier. But if we don't understand the beliefs that we've been given to control the perception of the world that we see, then we never break out of that illusion, right? That matrix that everybody has been deeply entrenched in in life. Most people live by an enormous amount of beliefs that are based in lies and based in fear and based in lack, and it causes them to create more of the same. So you have to take into consideration, how old are you when you're hearing this? Where are you in your own journey to change and transform the way that you think, to redevelop a different view around your world? And what are you willing to commit to in order to do it? Reading the book changes nothing. Watching the video changes nothing. Listening to the stories and movies and documentaries changes nothing. The study and the understanding of those things changes everything. And you have to be willing to go deep in order to do that. Let me share with you something else here. He says, when you talk of hard times, money scarcity, limitation, you're sowing that type of seed. What kind of harvest do you expect to get? So if you're, if you're complaining, if you're talking bad about things, if you're constantly affirming what you don't have, you're literally creating that energy inside of yourself, but you're also doing something else. You're telling your mind what to focus on. So as you go through life, you will see the things that are equivalent to making it hard, to not having it, uh, for it to be difficult, for it not to be for you. Whatever You'll see the equivalent of whatever your belief system is. So one of the ideas is, what do you notice now? What do you repetitively talk about now? What is it that you're seeing as your life currently? Because if you change that, you now tell your mind to see something different. Where the mind goes, the way will be shown. You'll either see easier ways, greater ways, more opportunity, things that you can change. You're going to be shocked when you realize just how easy making a lot of money is. When you see just how easy success is. Here's a kick. Are you doing what you love to do in life? Or are you doing what you think you have to do in order to be a responsible person 
in life? And where did you get that idea? You can totally do what you love. I'm not talking about somebody who says, I just love laying on the couch and eating pizza and playing video games. No, that's not. That's escapism. And we've got those things really confused. That's a person who's not found out what they love because they've never gone out and experienced enough in their life to actually find out what it is. That is our responsibility, by the way, not anybody else's. If you're an adult listening to this, or if you're a young man listening to this, you've got to get out and find out what it is that you actually like in life. It's your responsibility to expose yourself to things, to be like, what's in my heart that I really want to experience in this world? What's out there that is meant for me? Now, why do I say that? Because every one of us has a purpose. You're not here for no reason whatsoever. You're not here to just be around, be lazy, have all kinds of trouble. You're here to make a difference. Every human being on this planet is here to make a difference. We have to stop dividing people into good and evil groups in our mind and realize that everybody has a purpose, but not everybody's been taught that they have a purpose. It doesn't mean that they don't. They absolutely do. And when a person starts to wake up to their purpose, they start to see things very differently. They start to go down that path, right? When the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Everything that you need for the development of your purpose so that you can not only develop it, be it, go out there and do it, but it also means that it will benefit other people because everybody's purpose benefits other people. That's what we're here to do. We're here to make a difference, and we're here to make a positive difference, and we don't do that by focusing on what's wrong. We do that by focusing on what is my heart drawn to in life, and how can I develop myself to the best version of myself to be able to do that. That's a lifetime's worth of work, by the way. That is not just like, I'm going to read this book or watch 10 videos and everything's going to change. The more you practice and internalize those ideas, the more you see things differently and your world will change. It can be a lot easier than you think that it can be, but it does require some dedication on your part. Be willing to go deep. Go as deep as you possibly can, right? Go down that rabbit hole and see what's there. There's a lot there that you're not recognizing that you don't even know exists yet, but I promise you it'll change the course of your life. 